In this video, which is going to be one of a mini-series, I'll be showing you how you can bake some lovely sweet treats for that special person in your life instead of giving the typical flowers on Valentine's Day. These shortbreads are nice and easy to make, but they also give a lovely personal effect if you want to give them as a gift for somebody at Valentine's. You only need four ingredients to make the shortbreads themselves, which is plain flour, butter, caster sugar and corn flour. Some recipes don't have corn flour in, I like to add a bit of corn flour to mine as it gives a lovely soft crumbly texture when baked. Place flour, cast sugar and corn flour into a bowl and then add to your mixer on speed setting 1. I've used a time lapse here but it is on speed setting 1 throughout the entire duration of this task. After a couple of minutes of it starting to mix together, slowly add in your cubes of cold butter one at a time and then slowly allow it to start combining. If you don't have a mixer to hand, there's no need to worry. If you look at the bottom left of the screen, you can also see here where I've done the same recipe, just using a regular mixing bowl and using my hands to do the same process. The mixer you see on screen is a budget mixer purchased from a supermarket, which I have also reviewed on the channel. If you would like to see the video on that, check out the other videos available on the channel. And while you're there, why not hit subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. After a few minutes you'll notice your flour mixture starts to turn golden and will start clumping. At this point switch off the mixer and finish the rest of the task by kneading it all together by hand. You do not want to mix it all the way fully on the mixer as the continuous mixing will cause the flour to overwork and your shortbread biscuits will not be as crumbly when baked. Once your dough is all kneaded together nicely, wrap in cling film and leave to rest for at least 20 minutes. If you do intend to use it at a later date, you can refrigerate, although for the purpose that we're using here, the dough does work better at room temperature. Although if you weren't going to cut it, you can roll it into sausage logs and just slice and bake. When you're ready to use your dough for shortbread, cut it into manageable sized pieces and then roll out on a flour board using as little as flour as possible to prevent sticking and then roll out the pastry until it's roughly 5mm thick. To cut your shortbread into the heart shaped pieces, I have a set of heart shaped cutters, they're relatively inexpensive, I've actually had my set for years and years. Select whichever size is your preference, as you can see as the video tails on here, I'm going to use various sizes, starting with a large one to cut out the larger pieces, and then with the remaining pieces of dough, I'm going to use smaller pieces to use as much of the dough as possible. You can gather up the surplus dough and then re-roll it into a ball to roll for a second time to cut out some more shortbread biscuits. Make sure after you roll it back into a ball you rest it for at least 20 minutes and re-roll but only ever do this once, don't try to do it any further times as the glutens that will have built up in your shortbread dough will cause the biscuits to not become so crumbly when baked. Place your shortbread biscuits onto your baking tray, leaving a nice gap between each one and then give a very light dusting of caster sugar over the top. This will create a nice crust on the top and then place into your preheated oven on 160 degrees for roughly 25 minutes, although this will vary from oven to oven. Once your shortbreads have been baked, they'll have a nice golden colour to them. Remove them from the oven and then immediately transfer them straight from the baking tray onto a cooling rack. It's important that they cool as quickly as possible as any delay in cooling them will cause them to not be so crumbly later on. You could just give the shortbreads as a gift as they are, although now I'm going to show you some nice garnishing ways that make them really extra special. The first relatively simple way to garnish is to melt some chocolate over a bain-marie. While your chocolate is melting, take some baking paper and make a paper piping bag. It's important you use paper, not plastic, as you want the tip of the bag to be quite rigid. Place a sheet of baking paper onto your work surface and then place some of your shortbreads on top of the paper and then place your melted chocolate inside your paper piping bag. Cut a very small tip off the end of the piping bag and then just do some nice zigzag motions across the top of the shortbreads. There's no set pattern for doing the zigzags, it literally can be just done exactly how you feel. If you're confident with piping, you could even write a message on top of each shortbread. While the chocolate is still wet, take a palette knife and transfer the biscuits onto a clean sheet of baking paper. 
This is to make sure that the overhangs do not stick and stick out of the biscuits once the chocolate has cooled and set. For the next way of garnish, we're going to dip them in chocolate and then coat in some honeycomb dust. If you want to make your own honeycomb, check out the recipe on the channel. You can blitz the honeycomb into a fine powder using a food processor like I have here, or if you don't have access to a food processor, in the bottom left of the screen you'll see where I've also crumbled it by hand. Using another sheet of baking paper, spread out some more shortbread biscuits, dip as much of the biscuit as you would like into the chocolate, I tend to do just half, and then while the chocolate is still wet and before it's cooled and set, sprinkle some of the honeycomb dust over the top. If you are new around here and you'd like to see more cooking and baking, including more of the Valentine series, then start right now by hitting subscribe and turning on the notifications bell. As you can see, this is a relatively simple way of garnishing it, but it gives a very good visual effect and will create a wow factor if you decide to give them as a gift. And there we have our Valentine's shortbread, which can be used as a lovely gift as an alternative to flowers on Valentine's Day. Obviously, the shortbread recipe can be used regularly as well, and just cut into circles. If you have enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, leave a comment down below, share on your social medias, and if you have enjoyed the video, why not consider subscribing to see more of the Valentine series and lots more cooking and baking, and why not check out one of the recipes on screen now?